wonderful to have you with us for this December 27th, the first Sunday of Christmas. We're going to begin with the first Noel. We thank uh, Una and Margaret for being the soloists. Well, I guess our duet. <laughs> so they can bring us to worship. Those of us who are gathered here will just be quiet. But if you're at home, then you can sing along. <laughs> Let us pray. 
pray together. We thank you, O God, that you come again and brought us together to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessings. Give us the grace to keep our hand to the weak that is us, and your word to the weak of God. We praise the Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. And in a moment of silence, I invite you to come before God and allow his spirit to speak to you. Most merciful God, we confess the sins and God our word in you by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors and ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord our God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at that right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to God for our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. And raise For the Lord is a great God. And a great In his hands are the caverns of the earth. And the eyes of the earth are See his heads, for he made it. And his hands are molded through our Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. And kneel before the Lord our For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today we would hearken to his voice. Together, be joyful in the Lord of your hands and serve God all your days. Come now and stand before the Lord with a song of love and praise. Know this, the Lord is truly God and made us all to keep. You are God's people, God's alone, God's people, and God's sheep. Approach God's words with thankfulness, go through the age of praise, give thanks to God, and humbly fall on God's name always. The Lord, you are good, your mercy stands forever strong and true, and so your faithfulness endures, old age old, and never ended. A fierce reading is from the book of Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoot, and as the garden causes where the stone in it, to spring up, for the God, the Lord God, will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. 
For Zion's sake, I will not keep silence. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nation shall see your vindication and all the kings in your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the land of the Lord, and a royal deity in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning we have Psalm 148 for the half verse. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise, Praise him, him, my heavens. Praise him, all you angels of his. Praise him, all angels. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, heaven of heaven. And the waters of all heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded the neighbor of the He made them stand fast forever and ever. He gave them a law which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth. He is the monster of the Lord. Fire and hail, snow and fall. Tempestuous wind, wind and snow. Mountains and all hills. Fruit trees and all cedars. Wild beasts and all cattle. Breaking kings and angry birds. Kings of the earth and all people. Princes and all rulers of the world. Young men and maidens. All oh, young and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For his name will be exalted. His splendor is over again. He has raised up strength for his people and praise for all his loyal servants. The children of Israel, the people who are near me. Hallelujah. And together, blessed bless are you, Lord our God, creator of heaven and earth. You open our eyes to see the wonders around us, and our hearts and us to praise you. Now give us strength for all who serve through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our second reading is from Galatians. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has spent, sent his spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God, the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Lord 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 Jesus. Lord Jesus. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, <coughs> Jesus' parents brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of two turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came to the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, Mary, 
This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. And a sword will also will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet Anna, daughter of Daniel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise Amen. to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We invite you to be seated as we prepare our hearts to hear God's word. We'll ask Margaret to help us prepare by singing for a moment for us. I have traveled in many moonless nights, cold and weary, with the babe inside, and I wonder what I've done. Holy Father, you have come on and chosen. Send me now to carry your son. I am waiting in a silent grave. I am frightened by the load I bear in a world as cold as stone. Must I walk this path alone? Be with me now. Be with me now. Friends of heaven, hold me together before forever me. Breath of heaven, lighten my darkness, pour over me your holiness, for you are holy. Breath of heaven, you do wonder. As you watch my face, keep a wise look. Once you have had my place, but I offer all I can for the mercy of your land. Help me be strong. Help me be, help me breath of heaven, hold me together, be forever near me, breath of heaven, breath of heaven, light in my darkness, for me your holiness, for you are holy. Breath of heaven, breath of heaven, hold me together, be forever near me. Breath of heaven, breath of heaven, light in my darkness, pour over me your holiness, for you 
about this yet, you're just middle-aged, but some of us are old, you know. But there are advantages to being this old, there are. I've just been sitting here for so long, remembering, remembering so many things, so many things. I've got all these little snippets, they're just hidden away in my heart, little pictures of the past. Each of them a treasure that I keep in a special spot. And one of the gifts of being old like me is nobody expects you to do a lot. You can just sort of sit as I have been for these last hours. You can remember when I do, sometimes all the things that seem so scattered, well, they seem to just sort of come together. Well, yeah, I could tell you about some of them if you like. Would that be okay? You've heard some of these stories before, I know, but maybe you'll let an old woman remember well. I was remembering, I was remembering when the angel came. Oh, there I was, just, you know, a young girl eating the bread, doing the stuff that young girls do when you're helping your mom. Suddenly, there was this angel. And I couldn't believe that, he, that he'd that been sent from God and, showed, and God had chosen me to be the mother of the Messiah. You know, I'm not sure if I had any idea what was really involved whether I might actually have backed out. But I was just so happy to hear that I said yes. And I was so full of joy until I realized I had to tell my mom and dad and Joseph. They didn't take it very well, any of them. But then the angel came in a dream to Joseph at home. My sweet Joseph, what a man you gave me to protect me and the baby, care for us, despite what everybody said about me. He wrapped his arms around me and he protected me and he took me as his wife and he told them all to be quiet. And suddenly it didn't matter what the rest of the world thought. I knew what the angel had said. Joseph knew what the angel had said. And then I was remembering that trip to Bethlehem. Oh my goodness. What a long, long walk that was. Great with child. Heavy with both anticipation and fear. And Joseph, strong as he was, well, he was pretty uncertain too. Remember him saying to me over and over again, I'm just a carpenter. How can a carpenter be father to a king? How will I know what to do? How will I ever do that? And as I traveled along beside him, I wondered the same thing. I'm so young and I know so little. But God, if you're if you were with us, if you called us to this, we're going to go through it with you. And then came the night. Poor Joseph. I don't think in his wildest dreams he ever thought he'd be a midwife. <laughs> there we were, the two of us, in all our ignorance. And then suddenly, with the wail of a young girl giving birth, and the cry of Jacob or Joseph's joy as he saw the baby come, and the wail of that baby, 
Does the cold air hit his lungs for the first time? In that wail was the voice of God. After 400 years of silence, the voice of God. Not very long after, there came the shepherds. As if we needed any sort of confirmation. Actually, sometimes I did. But there came the shepherds. Oh, their faces were glowing. They had seen the angels. They were looking for the baby in their hearts. The joy of that night was overwhelming. And I remember thinking, I need to remember this. I need to remember this night in all its detail and keep it in my heart. I need to hold on to it like a treasure. There were quiet days after. We stayed in Bethlehem, somehow going back to Nazareth where everybody would judge us and Nobody would celebrate this little baby. It seemed like too much. So there we were, just the two of us, until it was time to go to the temple. And that's the memory that I've been looking at today. I've been just taking it like a diamond and turning it around to look at it from different angles to see where it would shine. And I remember walking in among that big crowd thinking, Everybody's here looking for the Messiah, and I'm holding it in my arms, and they don't know it. And I thought it would be a secret that we just keep. We brought our two little turtle doves, they're all we can afford. And then after the sacrifice, this old man came up to us. And when he set eyes on us, it was like his face glowed. He could hardly speak. And this strange man came and took that baby out of my arms. And somehow I knew that I could trust him. And he held that baby up before, just like this. He held the baby. And he pronounced that blessing over him. And I thought my heart would burst. And then he lowered the baby a little bit and he looked at me and he began to weep. And he spoke about how this child, this Messiah, would read the hearts of the men around him. And it sounded like my baby, my boy, your boy, God, God's boy would be rejected. And he said that a sword would pierce my heart. I didn't know what it meant then, but I knew that that was another memory that needed to be spoiled away, that I would need to think about it often and think deeply. When we had to run to Egypt, run for our lives to protect the baby on that long, long journey, I thought, is this the sword he was talking about? That was only a surface cut. You remember the day, John? You remember the day when you and I stood at the foot of that cross? The blood and tears of my son dripping down. My heart broke. And I think the heart of God the Father broke as well. And he looked down and he asked you to take care of me, be the son of my heart, that I should be your mother. And you cared for me so well all these years. And I hope, I hope someday you write the stories that I've been telling you. I hope someday that people will know the heart of my Jesus through your words. But that was the day that the sword entered my heart. It's taken me a long time to put it all together, you know. But there's the other treasure. The treasure of the day we went. I went weeping to anoint the body of my murdered son. And he wasn't there. He wasn't there because he'd risen. 
He wasn't there because his love and his life was stronger than death. And he came again in flesh and blood that we could touch and see in a voice we could hear to tell us that the love of God could destroy the power of death. I'm not sure I understand all of this, John. You probably will understand it better than me. You're so, so wise, and I'm just a simple woman who was given the grace of God to be a little part of his magnificent heart. But I've treasured all these memories in my heart all these years, and I've thought about them, thought about them, thought about them. In fact, most of the time, I've thought about them without even words. I just let them settle down into me. Began with the journey to Egypt. Just let it all settle. And somehow the Spirit of God spoke in my heart each time I was quiet and let my questions sit, let my thoughts grow. I've kept all these things and I've pondered them in my heart. And as I have, my Jesus, it feels like it's just beside me. He's been gone to heaven now for many years. But the more I ponder, the closer I feel his spirit. The more I ponder, the more I love him. The more I ponder, the more I know I am loved. I wonder if that's the way it will be for all the followers of the way. I wonder if those who come after me won't be long now. I'll go to be with Jesus. But there will be followers after me for so many years. I hope they discover treasures. I hope they discover treasures of God speaking to them, treasures of Jesus' presence, treasures of times when the Holy Spirit wraps them in arms of comfort. And I hope they keep those treasures and ponder them in their hearts. It's the way. That's what following the way is. Pondering all of the treasures to bring Jesus close again. Amen. I'd like you now to stand and join me in the Apostle's Street. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we sing. I believe God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son of God. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and then born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under conscious fire, was crucified, died in the spirit. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into the heaven. And he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body. May the life everlasting. Amen. Next is the meal to comfortable for the prayers of the people. In joy and humility, let us pray to the creator of the universe, saying, Lord, grant us peace. By the good news of our salvation, brought to Mary by the angel, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the mystery of the word made flesh, Hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the birth and time of the timeless Son of God, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the manifestation of the King of glory to the shepherds and the magi, hear us, O Lord. Lord, 
righteous deeds by the submission of the maker of the world, Mary and Joseph of Nazareth, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the baptism of the Son of God in the river Jordan, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. Grant that the kingdoms of this world may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. We pray today for the children and the families in our diocese that they may not in their lives when the earth is born with Mary and Joseph and Nazareth. And as the child grew in body and spirit, blessed by both God and our people, so may our homes be places of peace and safety where we nurture each other and grow together in God's love. And this week we lift up in prayer the elements. We are the body of Christ in the one spirit. We were all baptized into one body. Let us then perceive all the things of peace and build up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Our offertory hymn is Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
to be shared with those around us. And so I encourage you to think of the gifts that God is asking you to give, not to find in the lack of the new food, but the gifts of yourself that come from his heart and love flowing through you. And as you think of that, let's pray together. God of life, we invert of your Son, we see your glory. May we who share in his mystery, for obeying in your love. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. You set your meal. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all you have done for us. Pray together. We thank you for the splendor of all of creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care that surround us on every side. We thank you for setting us tasks which demand our best efforts, and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy our delights. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth and his word, and his example of his love, for his Christ and his life again, in which you are raised to a life of your kingdom. Grant us to sing it to your spirit. That we may know the rest of the day you know. And if you're dealing in all times and all places, may you thank you to all things. Amen. And I call it for today. Almighty God, you have shared on us the new life of your garden. May this light be built up in our hearts, shine forward in our lives, to reach the brightest of our world. The living remains in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. And we would And now may God the Father, whose ways are unseen and yet observable, this God of mystery, take us to unexpected places. May the Son, who lived among us as the God of humility, teach us to serve without pride. And may God, the Holy Spirit, who is wisdom, inspire our work in the kingdom. God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you. And we pray together. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord bless us and keep us. And as we go out into the world, let us be faithful witnesses to the birth of your Christ child and all that has been. Or come, all you faithful. <laughs>
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.